So infrared heating, and this is an inside of one of our panels, right? I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So this is our IR panel. Now, and this is our IR Sun controller. Um, why are people installing infrared panels? Well, they do have many advantages. Now, when I'm speaking about infrared, there is many different types of panels in the market uh, from manufactured in different parts of the world, which vary in quality. And I'm only speaking about our panel. Um, we call it the Sun Life One with the IR Sun controller, and we are Infrared Heating Ireland. We are in business since 2010. Um, it's in the last five years that the business has gone very well for us. Why? Because there's a big push on for electricity. People want to start using oil and gas, um, and they want to go electric. They might have solar panels in the house. They might have electric car outside, and they just want a clean, hassle-free system. And this is where we come in. We're, we're very much to educate people, um, to show people the advantages, because a lot of people that come to us say, well, I've spoke to my builder, I've spoke to my buddies, I've spoke to my electrician, nobody knows about infrared, and why is that? And we would say it's no reflection of the product, it's a reflection of the market. So if you go to other parts of Europe, this type of heating system is very common. Uh, in Ireland, it's not, but it is changing. Why? Because we have the data now to show people that uh, this is what kind of energy costs people are incurring using our infrared panel system. Electricity is not cheap in Ireland. Uh, other countries pay a lot less for their electricity. Now, this is December 2023, and people here in Ireland spend between 30 and 40 cent per unit of electricity. In other parts of the Europe, it could be as low as 15 to 20 cent. So, but when you compare with with the price of oil, uh, the price to run a heat pump, the price for gas, and then you factor in maintenance, lifespan, um, controllability. Um, e e even though electricity is expensive, the infrared panel system is still a very good option to heat your home. Now, we're not saying it's suitable for all types of houses, all types of clients that ring us. Um, th there's um, th the sweet... Uh, client for us would be maybe a client that has a C-rated house spending around 2,000, 2,500 euros a year on oil and wants to move away from oil and go electric. And they would be a client that very quickly we can see. <clears throat> then you have a client that maybe has a massive house and the, the heating system is working fine. And we would say, well, you know, um, your heating system is working fine. So unless you're massively wanting to move away from fossil fuels, but if not, stay as you are for another while. And then if that same client is solar on the roof, we would say, well, put in some panels. You don't have to do the whole house, but utilize that solar um, if you're working from home or heat a couple of rooms, or if there's a north facing room that's not heating right, well then put in an infrared panel there, infrared panel there. So the point I'm saying is that we don't sell to everybody. Um, insulation is important as well. The other myth people say, well, um, I have a poorly, very poorly insulated house. If I put in an infrared panel, will it be effective? And we'll say no, because the coal that's coming up from the floor, in from the walls, down from the ceiling, is, not go is, is going to overpower the heat coming from the panel. So the easiest way to explain that is if you go outside and stand in front of an infrared panel and feel that heat, you're not going to feel anything from it. Then you come back inside and plug in the panel, you're going to feel the heat from the panel. And what's happening? The, the heat still needs to radiate through the air to be able to pick up a surface and then to be able to heat that surface and reflect the heat back to the room. If the panel is too far from a surface, that's why we'd recommend the ceiling radiating down. Or if there's too much cold getting into the room from the surfaces, the floors, the walls, well, then the panel is not as effective. Yes, you can compensate by putting in more infra uh, two panels instead of one or a bigger panel, but still, then it becomes expensive to run the system. So with that type of a client that has a D-rated house, very poor insulated house, they need to get it to at least a C rating for, to, for the infrared panel system to work well. So let's look, have a look at the panel. Now, for, from, from all sense, from looking at the panel from the outside, it's a metal frame. They come in different. Some have a frame, some don't have a frame. Some are shiny and flat. Uh, this one is called a Sun Life One. Now, this is not the size of the panel. This is just uh, that the panels are could be 10 times this size. Um, but I just want to show you um, the panel. So it's 20 mil thick. Um, it's a chemical-free powder coating. 
Now, when I say chemical free, when it's being sprayed in the factory, they don't wear a mask. So it's it's put into, it's it's sprayed on, and then it's baked in the oven. Um, and uh, you can see, well, you can't see, but it's slightly textured like your ceiling. It's not a flat surface. And then there's no joints on the corner. So there's no fixings or anything visible. So that's the front of the heater, right? So that's what you see on the ceiling or on the wall. The reason we recommend the ceiling, as I said, is that the heat can radiate down. Um, and the panel, so at, within a minute, this panel will get to 75 degrees. Normally an IR panel will get to 90 degrees. We make ours at, to get to 75 degrees because over the lifetime, it puts less stress and strain on the heating element inside. So the heating element lasts longer because it's only getting to 75 degrees. So our panels, we make them slightly bigger and they operate at a lower surface temperature. Um, then on the back side of the heater, you'll see that you have a plate on the back and then it's slightly curvature to push in onto the um, insulation within the heater. And then it's, it's, it's pot riveted and closed in. So you, you don't see that, that's the back of the heater. Now there's a little bracket that sits onto the ceiling and then the heater slots onto the bracket. So there is a little gap around that much of the back of the heater. Um, why do we do that? It allows airflow through the back of the heater. And also if it's fitted directly to the ceiling, depending on the ceiling, it could cause uh, little cracks to form in the ceiling. Whereas if it's sitting away from the ceiling, you avoid all that. What's the downside to it? That this little gap over time, dust and dirt builds up. Um, so we'd recommend running run a, a, a duster to, to clean that um, and to keep it cleaned or running a hoover or something. Um, now I can't think of the type, it's like a long narrow duster, like a broomstick and you slide it in and it's, it, 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 it can push the dust away from the, then you can hoover it up. Um, so on the top part here, we've removed the backing plate and that exposes the heating element inside. So this is where it gets interesting because from there, you go online and you say, oh, well, oh, this panel is, is, is much cheaper than, than this panel. Why is that? And the answer is not from the outside. Um, now, possibly as well with the, with the quality of material. Uh, this is stainless steel, folded over, powder coated. And then inside, um, you have the heating element. So you have a series of wires that run like this, up and down and up and down at the back of the plate. And then they're held in position with aluminium. So when you power on your heater, the, 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 the electric goes through this and this heating element heats up. And then you have insulation here, which traps this heat. The back side of the panel maybe gets to 15 degrees and the front side of the panel will get to 75 degrees. And then this radiates. So there's two types of heat transfer, convection and radiation. Convection is a radi radiator on the wall. This is radiation heat. Now radiation being a strong word, but radiant heat is used in incubators, in infrared saunas, they have infrared pads for sports injury, for muscle. So infrared is not new and it's not harmful to the human body. Um, if anything, it's of benefit to the human body because people use saunas um, and so on. So um, that radiates within a minute, it begins to radiate heat. Now, how effective the heat comes from the panel is relevant to level of insulation, how regularly you turn on the heating, et cetera, et cetera. So if you come in after a weekend and, or in, you come into the office on a Monday morning and turn on the heat, it's going to take a bit longer to heat because there has been no heating on for the last previous two days. If you come in on a Tuesday morning, the heating has been on before. So realistically, if it's average insulation, um, the temperature shouldn't drop maybe under 13, 14, 15 degrees in that room. If it is dropping under that, you're more likely to look at the level of insulation. Anyway, back to this. So then you have, you have your insulation, which is a natural quilt insulation here, natural sheep's wool. Then you have your insulate or your heating element here. Now, this heating element, this is the key because, you know, if, if, if you look at the less expensive infrared panel, you'll see that the heating element is not as good a quality. So the, the thickness of the wire is around six millimeters and it's nickel plated. Nickel um, is a kind of preserves the, the heating element and stops the corrosion. So that will extend the lifespan of it. So this heater here will last for around 35 years and has a 15 year lifespan. And um, it doesn't make noise. Um, it doesn't glow. Oh, and in simple terms, that's what that's what the panel looks like. Now the panel's around between 
The heaviest panels are around 15 kgs. There's a stainless steel bracket that fits to the ceiling and the heater slots in onto that. So that is your infrared panel. As I said, this is only a little sample that, that we've made up to show you. Um, but the, the, the panel itself could be 120, 1 1.2 meters long uh, or four foot long um, by three foot wide or 1200 mil wide. So it's a, it's a lot bigger than this. But that's 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 good to show you guys because it shows you how the the panel is made and it and the big point here is to compare that the, there is there's a reason why things are less expensive and it's to do with the quality of the panel. Then we move to the controller. I love this controller. Uh, we've been um, we we've had very good feedback on this. Um, this is as important as the panel. So a lot of panels are controlled with the principle of the on and off, right? And the, the, the on and off is that you set 20 degrees on the stat. The thermostat, like a light switch, turns on the light, turns on the heater. And the heat or works and works and works. And when it reaches the 20 degrees, the switch inside the stat turns off the power to the stat, to the heater, and the heater gets cold. So you have this heating, cooling, heating, cooling, heating, cooling, right? Um, and then you look at this guy here. Um, this, this is called IR Sun Regulator. And we love this is because it's designed and made in Europe. It's a touchscreen device. It's easy to use. It has the application on the phone. And... Um, we're constantly updating the software. So the principle of this over the standard thermostat that I've just explained, what this does is when you turn on the heating and you set 20 degrees on the stat, the software inside this will actually begin to regulate the heat from the panel. So as the room gets to 17, 18, 19, and then 20, the software in this will actually regulate the heat from the panel. So it gets to a point where this, in simple terms, this stat says, well, the room's at 18 or 19 degrees. Why does the panel need to be on all the time until it reaches 20? So it actually throttles back the heat from the panel. So on the display, when it turns on, it shows 100% output. Then as the room heats, this will reduce back down. And on a colder day, it will run more. On a, on a slightly milder day, it will run less. And... On a colder day, it will obviously cost a bit more. On a milder day, it will cost a bit less. Um, but the principle of operation of this type of controller is called regulation, IR Sun Regulator. So what does this do? It reduces consumption by 20% because this delay of on, off, on, off actually will consume more electric. Whereas this, it's more like this. So it's, it's more consistent. So as the room heats then, the panel will only ever work as much as it needs to work, either to maintain the temperature or to get the temperature level up in the room, which means it's running more efficiently than a standard controller. Other big features with this controller is that um, you can put in what you're paying for electricity and it will tell you each and every day and every month how much electricity the panels are using. You have one of these in each room, right? Um, and then you have a central app that you would put on your phone and each one of these devices connects onto your Wi-Fi. And then when you open the application, you have all your rooms listed. You can go into them, turn them on. You can also lock the device. So if you're in an office in a public space, you can actually lock the device, which means you don't have people messing with it. If you're a landlord or an Airbnb, you can monitor the energy from away or the usage from away. Um, so there's many benefits with this type of controller. Um, the, the other reason we love it is because we have an input into the features of this. So we're constantly updating the app with new features um, and we can relay that back to our uh, manufacturer and uh, we, we love that as well. So what happens is that sits into um, a single deep back box in the house and then uh, you screw from the face and then you simply just uh, clip, clip on the face and that is it. So that's your IR Sun regulator, um, and uh, we love it. So that's our panel, that's our controller. Um, we, uh, so, so if you're building, if you're building a house, come and talk to us, 
building on an extension, looking to get away from oil and gas. And, um, you know, we're happy to give you all the information you need. You can talk to a local client that's using our product. Um, you can, we can send you into a coffee shop that's using our product. Whatever we need to do, we're happy to do that. We're a nationwide company. Um, we do do installation as well, which means um, if you are in any part of the country, um, and then some of our clients, would, we would supply the kit to, and they would get their own electrician to install the panels. And we can give all the support to that electrician as well. So for more information, check out our website, infraredheat.ie. Thanks, guys.